Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to some more Warhammer lore. Today, we're going to have a pretty quick one where we are taking a look at the various types of trolls in the Warhammer world. Now, I've had a few requests about this and the trolls, and, you know, generally, why do they hang out with the greenskins? Now, trolls are not greenskins, at the very least, not technically. In fact, they've got a hell of a lot more in common with chaos creatures than they do with the good old-fashioned greenskin, being essentially monsters created by chaos energy. However, they have, um, oh, how should I call it, acclimatized themselves to the Warhammer world in a way that most chaotic creatures really don't. This is partially because trolls are remarkably stupid, and as such, even if they are chaos creatures, they really are, they don't have much of an awareness of it. I mean, demons understand what they are, they are embodiments of violent intentions, or extreme virtues and vices. Trolls, well, while being technically chaos creatures, are, well, too stupid to actually know what they are for the vast majority of the time. This leads them to essentially be motivated by, well, three very simple things. Greed, hunger, and violence. Because, well, being chaotic creatures, they do find a certain catharsism in beating the living shit out of anything smaller than them. And this, well, <laughs> you can imagine, they get along pretty goddamn well with the greenskins. On many occasions, trolls are essentially forced to fight for the orcs and goblins. Essentially, the orcs just gather up nearby trolls and uh, goad them in the general direction of the enemy by stabbing them with spears and etc. You know, it works, but in most cases, trolls will happily follow a greenskin army around, simply because they have a bit of a symbiotic relationship. An orc army on the move leaves behind a vast mountains of rubbish and various nonsense, including, of course, the occasional dead greenskin and the, uh, rather more numerous dead goblins, and, unlike most other races, the greenskins won't really give too much of a shit if the trolls decide to eat a few of them, just because, you know, they felt like it. And their abilities in a fight are considerable, and as such, the greenskins consider them to be, well, very helpful, as <laughs> simple as that, really. They tag along with the army, they help out, they don't really do any real damage, I mean, they eat some goblins, but who gives a shit, and they eat, well, pretty much anything else. Trolls have a rather remarkable digestive system, to say the absolute least. Their stomach acid is, um, potent, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, to such an extent that they are capable of digesting rocks and metal. They are omnivorous in the most extreme of senses, although they do prefer meat. Preferably, they prefer, you know, non-green skins, because, well, they've tried eating green skins, and, you know, it works, but it's definitively not their favourite. They do have a little bit of a soft spot for um, dwarfs, though, or halflings if they can get their hands on them, and humans will definitely do in a pinch. But dwarfs and halflings has got to be said to be their favourites. And it is in these areas where the vast majority of the trolls hang around. Now, partially, this is because that, um, well, I should probably begin with uh, telling you about the various types of trolls. So, the most common one, by far, is the stone troll. Native to mountainous and rocky areas, they are the most normal type of troll, and they've been plaguing the Dwarf Kingdoms for a considerable amount of time. They were close to extinction by the time the Great War of Vengeance kicked off, but, uh, well, ever since then, the Dwarfs have been quite uh, preoccupied with other things to really finish them off, and uh, trolls are pretty goddamn resilient, after all, and in later years, their numbers have increased considerably. Although they have yet to uh, reassert themselves as quite the threat they used to be during the time of chaos for, well, obvious reasons. Although no one really quite knows how the bastards procreate, and um, as you're probably looking at a few artworks of the little bastards right about now, I think we can just quietly ignore that whole part of the lore because, um, yes, <laughs> I'd rather not go into 
grimy details on that particular part. Oh, heavens. But there are also a few other different trolls. The most common next to the stone troll of the normal trolls is the river troll. And as you may guess, they are named this because, well, they like water. Now, they are not fully aquatic, despite the uh, name. They are definitely capable of staying submerged for considerable uh, periods of time, but they do not have gills and cannot actively breathe underwater and stay underwater indefinitely. However, they usually don't have to, because one of their greatest weaknesses, their bloody stench, is actually nullified in a river. Now, a case of the stone troll. The first indication you've got of a stone troll being nearby is usually the rather remarkable stench and the absence of wildlife nearby, as most animals have considerably keener noses than us mere humans and dwarves. If the area suddenly goes completely silent of bird noises, etc., that's a bit of a warning sign. The next one is the giant idiot breaking trees and generally making a ruckus before appearing. This could be said to be the primary reason why trolls are a relatively small menace, despite their considerable physical attributes and the fact there's quite a lot of them. You kinda have to be a moron to get caught by one. Because, well, like I said, you smell them, you hear them, and you see them a hell of a lot longer before they see you, having also been possessed of rather shitty eyesight and not particularly good hearing. And add to that the fact that, again, they are complete and utter idiots. And so, in all due likelihood, even taking the most rudimentary of precautions, like, you know, avoiding that part of the forest that smells bad and makes a lot of breaking noises, is usually more than enough to keep you safe. The river troll, however, is a sneakier little bastard. You see, not only can't you smell the bastard if he's underwater, because, you know, water, but he's also a hell of a lot more stealthy while he's under water. Now, any ambush carried out by a river troll is, and believe you me, <laughs> purely and utterly accidental, as they are far too stupid to actually plan anything along these lines, although some goblins, river goblins, that are essentially river pirates that infest the waterways of the Empire, have attempted, at the very least, to train a few of the uh, rather dim-witted beasts to be utilised in this very respect, with uh, limited success, let's just say. But, again, the simple fact is that by sheer accidents, the brutish beast might be able to ambush a river barge. Now, this is really the only way a river troll is going to be taking on a fully manned barge, as uh, the waterways of the Empire are used heavily in transports, and, well, the riverways being infested by pirates, goblins, trolls, and all manners of horrible things, these things are remarkably heavily armoured and armed. However, not everyone can afford a river barge, so there are plenty of cases where less fortunate people trying to bring their goods from one place to the other in a good old-fashioned river boat have found themselves on the uh, uncomfortable side of a troll's gut. Lastly, I should probably also mention the good old Chaos Troll. Now, there are some arguments as to whether or not this is really a troll, because there is an argument about whether or not trolls really are creatures of chaos. Now, personally I subscribe to the whole chaotic creature idea. Now, this doesn't mean that they're warp creatures or anything, it just means they are so heavily influenced by the powers of the warp that they are no longer natural creatures, so to say. They're no longer natural animal densities of the Warhammer world. Although, of course, be the records being uh, quite spotty back before the coming of Chaos, well, we can't be certain. But, well, kind of makes sense just looking at them. They don't look very uh, normal, and the simple fact that we haven't the faintest idea how the bastards procreate as some of them, as you've been noticing, probably wears lion cloths, but other ones appear to be distinctly lacking um, dingle dungies. So, that's a bit of a mystery. But, back to the point. Chaos Trolls. 
Basically, this one is a Chaos Troll that is closer to its chaotic roots. Most likely it's been spawned far up in the north, and um, it's not a natural creature anymore. It's not quite a demon, but it is definitively not a normal troll. While even the most basics of trolls have remarkable regenerative properties to the point where killing one is pretty goddamn hard, the Chaos Troll is even better at regenerating and in most cases any wound inflicting on it will regenerate in some new and interesting form of mutation. Additionally, while many trolls will use the extremely corrosive uh, acid that they contain within their stomach as a weapon by vomiting it forth over enemies, the stuff that a Chaos Troll vomits forth is considerably nastier, as, uh, well, in some cases it could in fact be considered to be virtually the power of the war which lends credence to the theory that attributes the Chaos Trolls to more of a demonic existence than that of mere creatures. Luckily, they are still remarkably stupid and can be avoided in most cases the same as good old other trolls. Additionally, the things are not likely to be moving very far south because, being far more closely tied to the powers of chaos, they are also far more closely tied to the powers of chaos when it comes to their sustenance. As such, while normal trolls can hang out in the uh, center of the Warhammer world, chaos trolls need to stay relatively close to the north. Now, finally, what makes a troll a troll? Well, basically, it's strong, it's big, it's stupid, and it regenerates. And the regenerative part requires a little bit of an extra note. Now, there are a fair few creatures in the Warhammer world that regenerate, but very few of them regenerate to the level of a troll. In fact, the only way you can really kill a troll is by chopping off its head or destroying its brain. Essentially, you need to be separating what tiny little nut of a brain it has with the rest of the body. Now, decapitating a troll is problematic, to say the absolute least, as the things have next to the uh, thickness of tree trunks, which, you know, good luck chopping through that with a clean blow. And destroying their brains is also rather problematic, as the thing is tiny and encased in a rather considerable skull. It can also be killed by destroying its heart, although in this case you need to destroy the heart. We're not talking about, you know, stabbing a hole in it or something here. We are literally talking about just squashing it entirely, ripping it apart, these kinds of things. Or by cutting out its stomach. Now, <laughs> who went to the trouble of figuring this one out? I'm not entirely sure, because, you know, you'd have to find the wild troll, and then you have to go like, hmm... Can it survive having its stomach cut out? And after doing so, the troll kept going around, and he wondered, well, it is not dying yet, but wait a minute, I'm going to keep observing it somehow, and figured out that the troll cannot regenerate its stomach in time before it starves to death. A rather remarkable tidbit of oddly specific information there, but do well. And on that note, yes, the troll can regenerate major organs, which is why I'm saying you need to completely destroy the heart, not just pierce it. They can also regrow arms, legs, limbs, basically anything. It's, unless it's dead, it will regrow it. Now, there is one relatively easy way, however, relatively easy, to kill a troll, and that is fire. Fire stops its regeneration. Now, you're gonna need a good old-fashioned bonfire to actually burn the thing, and even trolls are not quite so stupid as to not understand that, ow, the bright thing burns and hurts and runs away, so... It's going to take some, um... Well, it's gonna take fire magic, it's essentially. Or, of course, artillery, specialized in the task, like uh, the dwarf flame cannon will do the job very, very nicely indeed. But just having a torch, for example, and uh, shoving it at the troll, well, it's going to scare it for a while at least. But you're not going to be killing it anytime soon unless the thing is, you know, covered in oil or something. Relatively unlikely. Another weakness that the river troll has uh, developed a bit of a, um, 
other. Well, I would guess entirely accidental resistance to. And that has been a little bit of uh, general information about the uh, most common types of trolls and uh, their, uh, well, nature. Until next time, I have been Arch, thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Have a good day.